Like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment saying that I subscribed, and you will be replied to. We'll be doing as many as we can. Who the fuck are you? It's a classic internet line if you are a virgin and you have no self-respect. Who do you think you are? The sweaty nerds will say during their online gaming sessions which usually last for about 14 and a half hours. Also, sometimes it happens in wrestling. Because who the hell are some of these people? Whether it's because we genuinely don't know them or because their WWE run was stupidly forgettable, I'm D. Wicket and these are the 10 wrestlers you've completely forgotten about. Number 10, PG-13. When your tag team name is the same name as the company rating, you're probably a bit shite. The team of JC, Ice, and Wolfie D, literally, those words mean not a thing to me. They're just random words thrown together. This is the first time I've ever personally heard of these guys. I, have you? Amazingly, these guys led the nation of domination before the team made its way to the WWF and were actually a part of the Black People Movement guerrilla warfare group for a short period of time. And clearly, their encounter with Dwayne The Rock Johnson made a very good impression on both of their careers. JC, Ice, and Wolfie D, the USWA. Guns, man, you may not know us, but we sure know you. See, right now, you're the top dogs in the World Wrestling Federation. Two time tag team. JC Ice with a drop kick, and look at those moves by JC Ice. <laughs> These guys are small, but they're wiry, McMahon. Is that right? JC Ice wide open, Rogers. Goodness, in a hard right hand. JC Ice. Wait a minute. What's this? JC Ice. Oh, come on. Behind you. And Wolfie D doing the number. On poor Al Brown, PG-13 with perhaps their eyes on the WWF Tag Team Championship. Double yes. Team Ever Done! Cow! Doing at the moment. They are quick. Look at this. Whoa. Wow. That match took about as long as the OJ. Well, what do you think? OJ. Number 9, Courtney Taylor. Another name that means genuinely less than negative 14 to me. Courtney Taylor is supposedly an American football player who, uh, wait, no, that can't be right. My, oh, my mistake. Courtney Taylor was an actress and the star of Prom Night 3 that, uh, no, that's not it either. Is it the, is it Courtney Taylor Taylor? No, no, she's none of these people. You know, you really have to have no meaning in the history books when not even Wikipedia recognizes you. Do I have a Wikipedia page yet? Look, all right, it is over. All right, I, I don't know how to say this. You're, you're dead weight. Don't bother coming by the house because I've already moved your stuff out of <laughs> I know how you feel, I mean... Number 8, Ryan Braddock. I'm starting to think that these aren't real people, but instead just stereotypical wrestler names thrown together for the purpose of fucking with me. Ryan Braddock debuted on the August 15th episode of SmackDown in 2008 and was immediately squashed by the big show just to let you know the direction he was going in. With his newfound momentum from being punched really hard by a giant, WWE said fuck it and threw him in a battle royal to determine a contender to fight for the WWE Championship. Why not throw the young lad a bone? He obviously didn't win. He then won his only match in WWE against Festus, by disqualification and then was bubble wrapped by the biscuit and gravy eating hillbillies. Lovely. Win ugly. He's gonna do whatever it takes to prove himself to the WWE fans, and especially He's the world's strongest champion. He weighs almost 400 pounds. Common knowledge. But uh, the odds are not in Mark Hill. You know, I touched over 260 pounds at least. From the second. It's the big O. The big O from Ricky Ortiz, and he's done it, ladies and Number seven, Gunner Scott. Okay, this one was definitely taken from a pro wrestling name generator. Look, I can do it too. Chuck Columbus, Billy Steen, Scotty Goldman. It's all bullshit, just like Gunner Scott, you piece of fucking... Gunner Scott, he was on SmackDown. Holy shit, he beat Booker T? What, uh, what the fuck? He got praise from Chris Benoit? What the, what the hell? He teamed with Benoit in pinned Booker T again, and then just disappeared? The hell? Wait, he was also the NWA world champion? What the? Uh, oh! Mr. Scott for the right hand. Oh, Mr. Oh, Kennedy! So much. This is Grace. Boom! The Kenton Scott in trouble! Oh! It's a body bag, it's a body bag! Yavari is rolling, and he is being put in a body 
body bag, and those things aren't exactly made for air. That's what The Undertaker does. There is the thing. Number six, Braden Walker. Oh, just fuck off. Come on, WWE. This is Chris Harris. He was part of America's Most Wanted with James Storm. Braden Walker? Fucking hell. Well, what did he do in the company? He had a catchphrase saying, I am Braden Walker and I'm going to knock your brains out. And that's the only thing keeping his memory alive. Oh my fuck. I want my job back. And every week you make me jump through hoops. I mean, who's it going to be next? Who am I going to face next, Teddy? You're going to go one on one with ECW's newest superstar. Knock, knock. Who's there? Braden Walker. And I'm going to knock your brains out. Number five. Dan Rodman. Fucking stupid name aside, I must say this guy's time was really weird, okay? He lost a few matches on Heat while he was still competing in OVW where he was also still losing some matches and then at a house show on June 17th, 2007, wrestled John Cena for the WWE Championship. What? First Ryan gets a shot at being the number one contender and now Ron Danman, whoever the dick, is getting a legitimate WWE title shot? WWE, you're such a strange company. of a bear hug Eugene asking for support from this crowd but I think everyone here is in awe of what their borderline giant and look out Eugene trying to slam it but that may not matter Rodman oh my does he have what it takes to become the next big star Number four, Eric Escobar. Another weird one, this guy was placed in a fairly notable relation with Ricky Guerrero, SmackDown general manager at the time, getting wins over the likes of Matt Hardy, teaming with the likes of Drew McIntyre, and even facing John Morrison for the Intercontinental Championship. He then turned face in an angle where he and Guerrero got into a heated argument, and then she started booking him in impossible matches, the last of these resulting in a loss to Kane, and then he was out of the company, a storyline that just disappeared into the thin air, the mystical beauty just gone forever but there's no punishment that you can send me that would be worse than me being in a relationship with you Eric, excuse me happy birthday baby Whoa! i just feel like escobar will insult vicky until the bitter end even escobar up and down a choke slam you will choose your words more wisely. Well, bad luck for you is tomorrow you're going to wake up still looking like that. Number three, Karma. Oh, this is disappointing. In 2010, the Divas division was exceedingly bland, and Awesome Kong from TNA in late December had been rumored to actually have signed with the WWE. Hoo-hoo! Interesting stuff. Vignettes began airing in April the following year, and things looked set. She started coming out, and she attacked the champion, Michelle McCool, the Divas champion. Divas! Look at that fucking butterfly belt and things were looking really interesting but then she came out one night and randomly started crying get a little game plan going right now i'd try to unite if we could Elena, kelly kelly and eve Well, this is odd, said everyone in attendance and at home, and unfortunately, she had come out to announce that due to an unplanned pregnancy, she had to take time off. I, like many other girls and women, have always wanted to be a mother. And I will, because I am currently with child, and I cannot compete or do anything physical and risk losing my child. I will be back. Pregnant? And I just thought you were really, really fat. Ew, Jim Ross was right. You're not diva material. She wouldn't make her in-ring debut with the company until the 2012 Royal Rumble, which was also her only WWE match, as she wasn't able to return within the time WWE allotted her, so she was let go from the company. Somebody get in there and get it, bro. Just break it all. <laughs> King, check this out. This is only the third time. Something like this. Get out! Oh, the ball is gone. He is eliminated. Look at Karma! Number two, Just Joe. <laughs> the fucking name's Just Joe. Come on, WWE. Why do you hate him? Just Joe was a backstage gossip girl, and that is quite the opposite of what pro wrestling is supposed to be. No, seriously, though, his gimmick was that backstage he spread rumors between wrestlers to start up fights. That is so weird. If it wasn't for Roman Reigns name dropping him on Raw recently, I literally would have forgotten to put him on the list. That's how nothing of a nothing this man is. Sorry, how are you? Oh, I'm, uh, Joe. Joe who? Just. 
Joe. Honorable mention goes out to Johnny Knockout, who liked big sweaty men. And number one, Hade Vanson. This guy is such a mystery to me, and probably, while the names on this list might have been a little less memorable, Hade earns a special place on the list due to the fact that he had a vignette air on SmackDown, a spooky, scary, boo vignette where he prophesized about a prophecy or some bullshit like that, and then he just disappeared. He was gone, out of the company forever and ever to never be seen again, not even to wrestle ever again. The dude was supposed to feud with The Undertaker and then get a world title contendership, but no, he just he just fucking dis we never saw him again it was just a vignette that aired and then nothing that's like if a movie trailer came out and then 10 years later still no movie what i have watched the darkness my entire life for over a decade i have searched your immortal power is all that I require. And those are the 10 stupid idiots Chris Jericho probably erased off the list because who the fuck are they? Did you enjoy? Do I know you? If so, click all of those forgettable buttons down below and subscribe to my personal channel, D Wicked. I make wrestling videos just like I do here. And if I still don't know who you are afterwards, I'm afraid you're getting added to this very same list next year.